Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Right now I'm in Utah visiting my parents-in-law and it's magnificent because this is their backyard. The mountains that you see behind me are part of the Wasatch Front, so I thought it would make a pretty good backdrop for today. I want to tell you about something I'm really excited about. It's the fact that Mr. John Clayton, one of the best upright bass players and musicians, composers, arrangers in the world, alive on the planet today, plays on my new album, Looking for the Answers. He plays on track number seven, Bye Bye Blackbird. I want to tell you how that came to be, and it's fitting that I do it in Utah because that's kind of where the story begins. I also just want to tell you about meeting players and singers and, and heroes in general and taking chances in order to make things happen. Because in my life, there are so many instances that I can think of that have shaped me as a person and as a musician because of little chances, little happenstances that I was somehow able to tap into or be a part of. And it's just amazing to me when I think back. Back when I was a sophomore in college, I met John Clayton because he came with Jeff Hamilton to my school, BYU, to teach a clinic. And they needed a piano player. They were in town with Monty Alexander, and Monty Alexander couldn't be a part of the clinic. So my professors chose me to be able to sit in with them that day during the clinic. But the part of the clinic that stuck with me is the part that I made a video about a couple of years ago. About It was about learning jazz repertoire in your memory, in your head, and, and not relying on your fake books. That really stayed with me and made an impression on me and changed the way that I thought about music in general. So when I made that video, I was just making it so that you all could hopefully learn that lesson as well, the one that John Clayton taught me that day. And I didn't dream it would happen, but it was about, I don't know, three or four months after I made the video that John Clayton and Jeff Hamilton came to, uh, well, they were in LA to play at the Blue Whale. And I, it was for a David Baker tribute, actually, because they went to school in Indiana. And I listened to them play, and I was just blown away. And I, I thought, at the end, I thought, maybe I'll just go hang around up near them while they put away their instruments. And if there's a second, maybe I'll just go shake hands with John Clayton. And I walked up to him to shake his hand. And before I could hardly get a word out, he just said, I saw your video. And that, that was, the, I, I mean, that, I just smiled like a like a dummy. I couldn't I couldn't even believe that he just told me that he had seen my video. He said a friend of his had sent it to him and uh anyway, we you know, we took a picture that day and um and I hugged him and uh and that was that. I I was on cloud 9. It was probably a month later that I was sitting at my gig that I've had I had for like 7 or 8 years. I'm sitting there playing and singing at the Baby Grand when I see the back of a head and I think to myself, that looks like it could be the back of John Clayton's head. And then I think, what if it is John Clayton? And I'm making music right here in this restaurant where I've been for seven years. And a lot of times nobody even pays any attention to me. Well, I better play like I mean it. I better play like it is John Clayton, just in case. It is. I think sometimes we all play little games with ourselves like that. Like, you know what if so-and-so walked in and heard me playing right now? How would I play? Anyway, all of a sudden I was in that situation. And then he turned around and he waved at me. <laughs> I just went, oh my gosh, John Clayton's really at my gig. So then I just played like my life depended on it, like just the best I could squeeze out that day. And I took my break and got to sit and eat dinner with he and his wife and we got to chatting and I mean he's so cool how cool is that that John Clayton decided to look up where I played on a Friday night on you know probably one of the only Friday nights of the whole year that he doesn't have a gig and or that he's in the country and and he came and so I was very humbled by that and and he also gave me his contact information that night and I didn't know why he did that and I didn't know what I would do with it and so I just kind of sat on that. I just kind of um, figured that maybe at some point I'd know what to do with that information. It was around Thanksgiving time. We were coming home from a, a little family trip, and I was thinking about music and my career, as I often do. And, and I thought, what if, what if I could ask John Clayton if he could just come in 
because I know that he doesn't live far from the place where I was recording my album, I thought, what if I could just ask him to play on one track? And what if it was a track that he already knew, so he didn't have to do any preparation? And what if we, you know, largely just improvised, like maybe we could even get it in one or two takes? So I decided to write to him and I crafted a little email and I showed it to John, my husband, and he was like, sounds good. And so I, you know, took a breath and pressed the send button. Um, he just wrote back and said, let's do it. So that was amazing to me as well. And um, I said, okay, we're just going to play Bye Bye Blackbird. You don't have to do a thing. I said, I said, let's, I think we could get it in like three takes max and you'll be out of there in a half hour. Um, and then he wrote back and said, three takes, huh? You must have heard me play recently. So he's teasing me. And then I think he made some kind of reference to, I'm pretty sure we can get it in one. So that's a little bit of pressure, right? Anyway, a couple of weeks later, there we were in the studio to record Bye Bye Blackbird. I came with a plan and I came having practiced quite a bit. So I felt like I was probably ready and I, I wanted to do something, I wanted to do something different with John Clayton, something that maybe hadn't been done before in, in this kind of a way. So, so my idea was to let him be in control of everything. It was it's just a duet with, the, with his bass and my voice. And we're playing a song that both of us know backward and forward. Um, he knows it probably a hundred times better than I do, but I wanted us to improvise. So I told him, the only thing I basically told him was, I said, I think I'd like to improvise for four choruses. So we'll do a head in, we'll do four choruses and a head out. I said, as we build through these choruses, I, I do want to build. I said, but I want us to be free. I don't want it to feel like it's a solo of mine for four choruses, but I want us to feel like we're, we're giving and taking from each other. And I said, I, I'd like you to just be free. You, I didn't want him to have to just feel like a bass player. And anyway, I counted off. We just went for it. <laughs> you can see it in, in the video, which will be up on YouTube soon, of Bye Bye Blackbird. At the end, we give a high five and he says that was officially one take. So that's pretty amazing to me that we did what we did in one take. And I have never played with anyone who was so free in my life. It took me by surprise at first. I, I had never played with a bass player who could play like a saxophone player, you know, and, and jump around and keep track of the harmony. And it was almost too much for me, but I focused my very hardest and um, boy, we pulled it off. And I feel like there were some really beautiful moments, some moments where I wasn't sure what I was going to do next. And then he did something and then I knew what I was going to do next. And he was listening and playing all at the same time. There was just this beautiful motion to it. I feel like we're just dancing together. And and it's so magic that that could happen when he and I had only really ever talked, you know, just for a few minutes. And we could just get together and make music like that. One take and it's on the album. And I'm so um, excited for you to hear it. Now, I did say that I wanted to talk about moments that, you, that you're presented with and, and how if you act on those moments, Sometimes if you just trust your gut, good things can come from it. And I do want to talk about that. But I think I'll continue in another video, maybe in this exact same spot, uh, for tomorrow. I don't want this to be too long. Anyway, that's coming up. Um, thank you for being here with me in this pretty place. And the video will be available very soon. And in the meantime, please pre-order my album on iTunes. Or if you see this after the album has come out, go grab it for me. It'll be on Spotify too, in case you don't have that cash flow. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.